Hello and welcome back to Woodhill Park. Thank you very much for joining me again in 2024. I've been enhancing my station and adding borders, which I'll show you how I made these flower borders and added them to cover up an unsightly hole in my platform. Also lighting, as you can see I'm working on at the moment, just to enhance the lighting around the station and also the start of detailing inside the station. So stick with me and hopefully enjoy some of the bits and pieces I've been getting up to at the beginning of the year with a little running session at the end just to see the video out. Right, in order to cover up the holes in the platform where the subways were, I'm going to make some more borders and probably replace some of the ones that I've already done um, because they'll be a bit wider so that they can go over the hole. And I make these out of half a mil thickness black plaster card and it's just the old sheet I've got. It's quite damaged, but it's just going to be the base. So it needs to be just a bit wider than the old subway hole in the platform, which is about 21 mil. So I'll just measure it 21 mil, cut off a strip. And with the microphone more in the way, but never mind. <laughs> Everything's in the way when you're modeling. So if you've never cut plastic card, it's very easy. A couple of scribes with a knife. And it just breaks simply. Quite simple when you ain't got a wire in like this. Right, I've now got me width. And it's just a question of length. And I want them 60mm long. Right, I'm just going to do something about this wire. There are some uses for the rafters that come down from the roof, holding the wire out of the way, for instance. Anyway, back on topic. The ends need to be reasonably square. I think they're yeah, pretty 
square so we're looking at 60 mil long uh, better get get me square I use this one mil thick plastic card and I cut it into two mil strips. Quite simple really. It's not actually square, which does look better. So two mil strips. Don't have to be perfect because if it's slightly uneven, it just gives a an unkept look of the uh, the curb around the garden area. Now you can break it off after a couple of scores but it's quite hard when it's a very small width so I continue to go through it until I cut it completely. And just make a load of these two mil wide strips up. ends are pretty square so providing the ends are pretty square we're just going to glue this up to the base with a drop of super glue and in this case super glue is probably best administered with a cocktail stick so Proper high viscosity super glue is best so it's not so runny and it takes a little bit longer to go off. where it becomes a bit tricky because you're going to put it down and it could glue to the, the mat and you want to butt this up squarely to one end and use a ruler to push it up and at the same time ensure it doesn't stick to the mat as I said so push it up against if I can show it the base and sure you move it a little bit so it don't stick to the mat and then it should stick to the base and it should be flat and level and if you've butted it up level with the end of this then there should be no protrusion of the curbstone at this end. If there is, you can just lightly trim it. Thank you. 
because superglue bonds to water molecules it uh, helps if you hurl on it so a, a bit of damp actually speeds up the drying time so if you blow on it or hurl on it it will speed up the drying of the superglue or you can get an activator and pay a lot of money for it or saying that you some surfaces don't take super glue that well and you do need an activator such as an anodized surface on metalwork but if it's straightforward plastic like this a little bit of her in it on it is uh, good enough to get it a go off anyway basic curved flower border always get a little emery board as well just to neaten up the corners or anything that doesn't look that even you can take more time and make it absolutely perfect if you want but to be honest it's not really going to notice once you've got all foliage hanging over and the odd imperfection looks quite good sometimes rather than it being too perfect right next stage really Right, this is the bit where the fun starts. What I do is gather up all the bits and pieces, all the junk that you can use, like foliage and stuff that's, I don't know, you've used on other projects. And there's leftover bits, there's bits that have fallen off some of your layout, uh, bits of trees that you've made in the past that have just shed bits and pieces and old projects where you've grassed an area and it's gone wrong but you've still got it glued to some PVA so you've got a ready-made grass piece or you can buy sheets online of little bushes people make and some of them where they've failed where you, you put them on the layout and they've not taken or you've decided you don't want them and pulled them up I still kept them as sort of junk to do things like this and bits of foam that you might have used uh, as foliage and decided you didn't want it or whatever and just put it all in a box and a day comes you make something like this also I, I make these sedum trees sometimes and they get a bit brittle and bits fall off them but they look quite good as little shrubs and bushes so I tend to start by just putting a lump of grass in the bottom of them so find what fits trim it in fact you don't want to trim it too much because it doesn't matter if it overhangs because in real life weeds and grass just grow over the edges of things so I'm looking for bits that just fit nicely like this bit fits really nicely so what I'll do is just glue that in as a starting point drop a super glue again and then just push it in 
or you can just start from scratch using static grass and PVA glue but I find this a good method to use up old rubbish right now I've done that I can start off offering up other different grasses and bits and pieces so we'll add some of this foam you can use other glues but the super glue is very quick to change the area you're working on Grasses that come on sheets have got self adhesive backing on them, and you can just break them up, tear them up into little pieces, and push them in, and they'll stick. Plus, you can cover the whole border in PVA at the end if you're worried about stuff that hasn't stuck properly. I'm just working it into it just to fill it up with a, a variation of grasses and bits and pieces. It's nice when it hangs over as well, like this, it starts to look a bit overgrown. Especially in my case, the uh, station wasn't as well kept as it used to be years ago. And in the 1980s, the boulders were looking rather sad and all overgrown, which is a shame. So depicting that with stuff all trying to climb out the boulder. In my case, is quite accurate. So then brimming with grass and weed and overgrown shrubs and flowers that's just not been looked after properly. Next step will be to add some larger shrubs in. And I do this, like I said, with old bits of tree I've made and bigger bigger items so something like that which is a bit of a a uh, sea foam tree I made just need to make it the right sort of height and then I'll, I'll super glue that in actually
just tuck it into the undergrowth. Hold it there. So I'll add a different shrub. Oh, it's falling apart as I touch it. Length so it's not too tall, but super glue and push that in the grass. Might need to add some more super glue to uh, bigger shrubs like this at the base. Let it run down the the trunk. Well, not the trunk really, I suppose. The uh, the main stem of the plant or shrub, and then continue to hold it until it goes off. This won't take long. Almost got it now. And then you can hurl on that to speed up the drying as well and try not to blow it over. Something for it to lean against for a minute. Right, let it lean against my plier handle for a minute. Try not to glue the pliers to the grass. Yeah, so I need to hold it up. Right, I'll let them dry and then I'll possibly add some PVA glue to hold it all in place still and uh, add some paint to sort of have flowers and berries on, on the shrubs. It has been mentioned in the past that uh, people think I mumble, and I possibly do. I'm not a great narrator. I sort of got forced into doing this because people didn't like the titles and they wanted to hear me narrating. But I do fumble over my words, and especially when it's cold up here, I struggle with my voice sort of going croaky and whatever and uh, I do have problems narrating I am quite quietly spoken normal uh, normally see I do things like that I'm quite quietly spoken normal normally unless you get me really cross I'm not one of these big mouths of uh, a nowadays sort of society we got I tend to be quite quiet and it comes across as mumbling, I suppose. I'm not that clear, but I certainly ain't the best narrator in the world, and I know it, but I do my best, as people do like to hear narration more than they do see, see and read titles. But uh, I am a reluctant narrator, so I do my best. Hopefully that's good enough, though. Another thing you can do to add foliage is get some lacquer and on the shrubs spray the lacquer. And 
and then your chosen colour of foliage just sprinkle it over so I want these to look like sort of like heather bushes really something like that with a bit of blossom or flowering on them so not to go over the top and then just spray again to get it to hold in place some of it has fallen off and fallen on the grass below but then that just looks like some of the the flowers or foliage has dropped off I'm going to add a, a little bit to one of these as it's the same shrub as the ones I've just done other shrub this end I'm going to put some little tiny blobs of paint on it to show berries really and that's usually fairly effective right, it's all getting a bit messy here so put some of the things out of the way and I'll show you my method for putting some berries on a shrub the colour I'm using no, it doesn't tell me the colour actually, but it's it's a humbral gloss 19. It's like a bright cherry red. And what I do is get hold of the border, make sure the camera is pointing the right way, but it doesn't look like it. And uh, get a cocktail stick and a little bit of the time just dab it on and reapply it to the cocktail stick and just go around dabbing it. And it'll look like a shrub that's got berries on. A very young shrub in this case it's not very tidy yeah. that'll do so if I turn it on its side probably get a fair idea of what it looks like if he was to be 176 scale I suppose now what you can do to that is get the weathering powders out and with the curb stones and with the weathering powders which Tamiya weathering powders in this case it's snow soot and rust I tend to use the dark rusts and soot just for adding grime really so a little bit of brown or dark rust and just a bit here and there without you know, covering it just making it look a bit grimy right with just a, a drop of copy decks at the bottom of them bottom of them so i can remove them at any point I'll put them in place. Oh, <laughs> yeah, not too good. It sticks to your fingers as well. Never mind. Let's put a little bit more on, more of a blob. 
just to show things do go wrong I think it's straightforward copy decks because it's rubbery it's a rubbery sort of glue it can stick to your fingers and you don't know it <laughs> and you pull the very thing you're sticking off again but basically that's it Oops. Oh, it is it's a load of rubbish really <laughs> stuff you would have thrown away just all pushed into a, a little border I can see from looking on the camera though that that needs pushing down a bit I actually ended up sticking this one down with Evo stick as it was a bit stubborn and I'm still pushing it down every so often as it's another impact adhesive and uh, a bit stronger than copy decks but it's still removable and um, it just does attack plastic certain types of plastic polystyrene and stuff like that but it should be all right with ordinary PVC plastics in the long run I might actually not just have a border here to cover this hole in the platform I'll, I'll actually put a building here as on the station I'm modelling there is a building down the platform and it would be quite handy if it just sat over the top of this hole but as for the, the one in the foreground that possibly will stay there and just acts as a good way to cover a hole really but on the real platform there are these borders and be it in a very poor state now to what they were and remember when you're finished bang all the stuff that you didn't use in a pot or tub for next time don't throw it away <laughs> it's uh, usually very handy for modelling to keep anything like this until next time over the top of that and the other subway entrance over here 
I placed a, a disused station building on top of it, which I just made a quick scratch build of what actually is on the station, even to this day. There's a building very similar to this, and it's just along the platform from the canopies, like you see. So that sort of worked out quite well, because that sat just over the hole for the subway and the platform that I wanted to get rid of. I've been working on my station, doing a bit of detail on the inside, which involved adding a few more lights for a waiting room that I'm adding as there used to be a waiting, waiting room in the 1980s and it was just open and exposed like this nowadays it's all sort of glassed in really just to stop you know the cold getting to people waiting but in the 80s it was quite open plan um, got to add some walls still um, toilet doors there's some toilet doors to go in here but yeah I'm starting to do stuff inside even though you only see a limited amount through the window and you will see a bit at the moment I haven't even painted the seating seating I've just bought uh, 3D printed seating it's close enough to what used to be there I think and it's only roughly glued in and not even painted at the moment just to really give me an idea how much you can see through the windows I've started to remove some of the stands that the figures sit on as they do look a bit silly and a bit clumsy but there is one or two that I've used a finer stand and cut it down a bit really so it's not too noticeable as they're extremely hard to get to stand up using something like copy decks like I do so that the figures are easily removed if I want to remove them but certain figures are extremely hard to stand up while you're gluing them with such a weak glue like copy decks so the old ones still have a stand just to make it easier but I'm trying to eradicate some of the real rubbishy looking stands I put some of the figures on even the maintenance guys are glued down with a bit of pop copy decks at the moment that still allows me to move them into a different scene if I want to but I don't have clumsy looking stands underneath them so I think that's the way to go in future to add a bit more realism I've also been adding the yellow lining that would have been in place during the early 1980s as the HSTs were coming in and people were being warned to stand back from the platform while a fast train passed through so the yellow lines for the main platforms are done they will buy model railway scenery I think and they're just vinyl stick on lengths of yellow banding sort of thing if you're going to use them as yellow band but in this case I use them as a yellow line on the platform I've been adding more litter and sort of discarded newspapers and seating and you know, filling the litter bins up And here and there it's becoming somewhat of a, a messy station. But I'm still trying to keep it fairly uncluttered in a lot of places. I 
I really can't stop adding detail and fighting it more and more sort of how do you say intriguing what I can add and how much more I can make it sort of look a bit more realistic shall I say things like the AWS ramps as well in the track that I've neglected to put in in the past got some more Backman figures to add to the layout also, I've been wanting to clean the layout without sucking the figures up and doing damage to things. Also, I've got a, a large vacuum cleaner, which is great for doing things, but it's a bit too powerful for just cleaning delicate things like the new station. So, I added to my own sort of Christmas presents by buying a... Uh, little mini vacuum cleaner and I've had it out and run it for a little while and it, it seems to be pretty good it's got a lot of suction so I'll have a go at using that in a moment so far I'm quite impressed with this little vacuum cleaner it does do everything I want and that is get in between things without sucking things up give you an example of how powerful it is. There's the manual. That's full power. Oh, it's, it's ideal for small items. You know, if, it's, if it's not stuck down, you still stand a chance of sucking it up. Yeah, I don't know if you could hear off of that, because it is pretty loud, but then it certainly does the job. And it will suck up things if you get too close to stuff. But with a brush, you know, going round stuff, it's quite able to go round without sucking bits up. So, ideal. And I've been wanting one of these for a really long time. But I was trying to choose carefully and it seems like it's paid off so far it certainly is the ideal car vacuum providing it's this size makes an excellent job I just got it from that large online shop and it hasn't got any sort of special name at all but uh, Probably made in the usual place, but nothing to complain about so far. It's doing everything I want. Well, just to add, I got a few Christmas presents for the layout, but there wasn't that many as I didn't really want anything that large because I've been spending quite a lot over the year on rolling stock. So my daughter bought me this and uh, I think that's what I'm going to do I'll do the odd live stream now and then and I've already started testing to see what mics I'm going to use and how it comes out I have yet to work out how I'm going to reply to people I don't know how the sort of comment side of it works so I need to look into that but in saying that, I am a modeller first 
and a YouTuber second so I don't know how much time I'll have for doing this as I still pretty much do a full-time job and uh, I do look forward to retiring and having more time I enjoy YouTubing but railway modelling is my main passion and I like I do like to share it I must admit and I enjoy all the feedback and hearing from people and uh, knowing that they're enjoying it with me so bye for now see you again next time